Good morning. Welcome to Ben Binfro Thought for the Day for Wednesday 25th of August. I normally avoid basing a thought for the day on well-known gospel passages, which many others in our benefice know and have thought about far more deeply than I. But today I'm going to be brave, drawn by the allure of the mysterious Syrophoenician woman, if Syrophoenician is the right pronunciation, and her extraordinary faith. This story appears in Matthew and Mark. The designated passage for today is Mark's version, and I love Mark's Gospel. It has a kind of pared-down focus, short, fast-paced and to the point, as Richard Myers put it in his Thought for the Day last week, but also with a charm of its own, and small details occasionally thrown in for no obvious reason. The reading is Mark 7, verses 24 to 30, and I'm reading from NRSV. From there, Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. What makes this story stand out, of course, is the very odd exchange between Jesus and the woman. The more one thinks about that exchange, the more rabbit holes appear down any one of which one could easily disappear without trace. Is the woman passing a test or winning an argument? Or is it all playful banter? Context provides perspective, but not really answers. The relationship between the Jews, particularly Galilean Jews, and the apparently more prosperous, more sophisticated Gentiles of Tyre and Sidon seems to have been a fraught one. We know that just before this incident, Jesus has directly challenged some of the basic tenets of the Jewish exceptionalism with which he rebuffs the woman. We can also look at the language. The word used for dog is apparently a diminutive one, um, lending weight to the playful banter argument. I suppose that softens the harshness of Jesus' metaphor, but it still doesn't sound exactly compassionate as a response to a woman desperate to save her child. We can speculate that the woman was educated and intelligent, but the way she deftly turns round Jesus' metaphor rather beggars belief. For saying that, you may go, says Jesus. What would we have said? How would we have reacted in a moment of such desperation to being classified by some foreign mystic as a dog? even if it was a friendly family pooch. But in looking at what messages this all carries for us today, it is, I think, easy to overanalyse. The style of Mark's storytelling gives bite to the broad, fundamental Christian teachings that the stories convey, and brings us back to those fundamentals time and time again, 
and we need to maintain that focus. Certainly this passage gets us thinking about the vexed and ever-relevant issue of prioritisation as a form of discrimination. Think global vaccine distribution, Afghanistan. But looking for guidance by imposing complex modern thinking on an exchange like this is surely a mug's game. The story earlier in Mark of the little girl raised from the dead, ends rather charmingly. Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Food, in some guise or other, is never far away in Mark's Gospel. The ending in the story we have just read, and which does not appear in Matthew's version, strikes a similarly matter-of-fact domestic tone. She went home, found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. I imagine myself accompanying the woman home after her encounter with Jesus. I walk with her in silence. I worry about what she will find when she gets home. Will it all end in crushing disappointment? How will she cope with that? She, on the other hand, seems serene in her silence. I don't know whether she is harbouring similar doubts. I do know that biblical faith is the great mega-lesson, to quote Richard's thought for the day again, that Mark is teaching us, even if I'm not learning it very well. And I am left with an image of the woman finding the child sitting up in bed sipping on a comforting bowl of chicken soup. Or maybe not. Anyway, have a very good day.